Hello and welcome back to the casting tutorial. This time on how to import assets, more specifically sprites, which are images. So it's the Godot. Uh, you have to use the Godot importer. So the way you use that is to you just put your file in your project folder, which is going to be called res dot slash slash, uh, which is going to be the the project for uh, the the folder which has your project dot Godot file. So once you have done that, you open the Godot editor, which will automatically import the file, and then you, the, you open the Castagne editor. And from there, you have to link it the file. So I won't teach you how to export your PNGs and, to, and how to import in detail with Godot, because that's uh, more advanced, and uh, you have a lot of other tutorials that do it specifically. I will just tell you how that works with Castagne, how we're able to link the file, which for sprites is a bit involved, because it's not as standard. So here I have already put my uh, my sprite sheets here in my folder. So uh, you can see I have it here. Uh, it's already imported, so I just can just start my uh, casting editor. Uh, and from there, you know, I have I can select my character. So tutorial to do here, I created it earlier using new character. Uh, if you are following along exactly at my steps. Don't forget to also select it on the other side and to change the palette, which is going to be something we will check a bit later. So I open my character editor. And at the moment, I don't have anything, which is because I'm using the 2D module. And uh, well, my uh, my character is uh, is trying to instance a 3D model, which won't work, obviously. So. I need to start by going into the the navigation panel and select one of these blocks here. You know they are red because it's uh, not uh, because I haven't been created. I need to check the graphics settings one and open it. And here I can change my uh, parameters. So I want to go from models to sprites. So I uncheck this and check that one. And I want to give it my sprite sheet. So I create the sprite sheet. I give it another name. So I call it Move for movement. So I click the rename, otherwise it won't rename it. And then I have to take the path. So to get the path, I just go into here, check the file system, right click, copy path. And this will give me the path inside of the folder. As you can see, start with res dot slash slash. And if I just do it like this, so you can use this button to hide this small additional panel. So if I reload it right now, I'm getting a bit of a mess. So well, because I'm trying to use the whole sprite sheet here, which, uh, well, uh, what is a sprite sheet exactly? So a sprite sheet is a collection of sprites. So a sprite is an image of my character. So it's a, uh, and the sprite sheet is a collection of those images uh, that are uh, in, on a regular grid, which means every sprite is the same size. And I have, uh, have my grid here and it's, uh, and I need to check the number of uh, columns like horizontally how many sprites I have, and vertically how many sprites I have, the number of lines, and put it in sprite x and sprite y. For instance here, it's four columns, so sprite x equals four, and two lines, so it's equals to On my sprite sheet, so I don't know if you can see it well here, but I have 10 sprites uh, on in one line and two lines. So I go back here, click here, don't forget to show the panel again, and put 10 and two. So this one, so now it only shows one sprite. That's good. And th then I need to, so you can change the size a bit, of course, though it's a bit, uh, It you might need to adjust a couple other things. Like here, if I just put that, it's, uh, you can see already I have a bit of an issue because it seems like my sprites are warping. But why is that? It's because they are not uh, anchored properly. So what is an anchor? So you see here, because every sprite can be a uh, different size and the origin of a sprite, the original one, is on the top left corner. So that means my sprite doesn't mirror correctly, it doesn't stand correctly. So what do I need to do? I need to actually give it this origin point uh, or anchor point, which is going to be at the character's feet. It's about center of the character and exactly at the ground level. And I need to take the pixel coordinates for that and give it to my sprite. So uh, from there on, I just so I go back to, to that and give it here. So I think for mine it's 128.16. I just keep the, the scale as normal for, for this example. Pixel size is, uh, is another way to change the scale, but that's only for 3D uh, graphics because it adjusts the, 
it, on, it won't do anything in the 2D module. So when I reload, you can see my sprite is now on the ground. So, uh, as expected, he mirrors correctly. That's not an issue. So then well, let me let me go go it back. But yeah, so here right now it has the animation. It's not it's not really uh, it it says errors because it can't do an animation. So why? Because casting has an animation uh, uh, system which works very well for 3D and uses uh, those standard animations, but you can have to remake them for 2D uh, because it uh, because the way that 3D works is that it already exported the animations with it, while here you will need to specify them yourself. So here, so you have uh, all those things and you can put the animation name here. So stand, it doesn't have a stand anim, but we'll create it by going to graphic settings and creating the animation here. So of course, don't forget to show the panel. So I'll call it stand, that way I don't have to change anything on the way. Don't forget to rename it. And then you put the parameters for each frame of animation. So this is a simplified interface, maybe we'll change at the time, but yeah. So I need to specify the sprite sheet. So here it's move because I wrote it here. The frame I want to show here zero and the duration. For instance, here I'll put uh, 16. So then on the duration, I put then that for all the other frames of animation, so I put one for four frames, and I don't need to respecify the sprites if it if it doesn't change, so I put, but I change the sprites, so I put one, then out of the 16 frames for frame number two, so, and duration four for the last frame, which is number three. So here at this point, let me hide it here. You can see my animation plays. So here in my, uh, because I do uh, 16, then 4, 16, then 4, my whole duration is 40 frames. So I have to tell it to here to do a, a loop at 40 frames. In. So of course, this, uh, if you put it, uh, if you put the wrong value, then the animation just uh, stops after a bit and then restarts again later. You will have to do that for every animation you want to put in in the standard system. So you know here for instance I didn't put it for the walk, so the walk doesn't work. So yeah. Let's uh but now you can see like my characters have weird colors. So that's because they are meant to be using the the palette system. So each one of these colors is a uh, is referring to a specific ID. And uh Castang needs a, a specific uh, image like this one, 16 by 16, that has all of those IDs here. So, and then I need to give it, uh, so there it's, there's more information in the documentation, but I have my two palettes here, and I will give them to the character. So, first of all, I need to uh, to add the palette. You don't need to rename them. It uh, works on the order. So I put one, I put a second one with the other path. And then on my movement sprite here, I tell it to use palettes, because if I keep it at zero, it won't apply any palette. Uh, that way you can uh, still keep effects and stuff like that inside of your sprite sheet without having to, to go through the system. But if you put it at 1, it will work. So if I do it now and I reload, I have my palettes applied to the characters. So same sprites, but because the, they refer different colors, they will get different colors here. So that's good. Uh, if you want to, to use that in an attack, for instance, if I create uh, a simple attack you can check how to in the in engine tutorials of course so if i do that i don't have the so of course here it will uh, my uh, i can use the same animation system here uh it's usually meant for 3d but if i put one of the sprite animations i put i can just use it here so here it plays a stand anim and then it stops you know for the attack that's why he plays it twice, it's because the attack happens and then it's the, does the animation. But you can also use the sprite uh, function, which finds if I put f1 here, I put the sprite 8, it will show the, uh, the ninth sprite when I attack. So this one is not really, uh, of course, you know, here it's not uh, an attack sprite. Let's add another sprite sheet to the mix. Uh, because you can put as many of them as you want, so I'll put my uh, physical attack sprite sheet. So I rename it. 
and then I do the same thing. So I have this one. I don't know if it shows, but this one has five lines and ten columns. So copy path once again. I put the parameters as expected. And don't forget the palette. So from then on, when I put it here, it doesn't change anything because the animation we put does use the movement sprite sheet. But when I do it here, I can actually refer to the physical sprite sheet by putting it before. And now it shows the, uh, the sprite for the attack. I can then change the sprite later on. I don't need to re-specify it again because it has, uh, because it is already, it is the same sprite sheet and I told it once before. You know, here it does play my animation and the attack works with the hitbox. So you can also specify it with S branches. It's equivalent here. I used frames. So frame one to do that, frame eight to do that. You can also use S branches as, uh, as you can in case nine. So of course, once again, check the in-engine tutorials for more details here. Let's add one last one. You know, with the sprite function, which you can find in the documentation and in engine tutorials. And now I have my uh, my small animation that does an attack. Of course, you can say, yeah, the sprites are a bit small, you know, uh, the, the arena maybe is not the size you want, you know, all of that you can change through the casting config, but that's a bit more advanced, so we won't show that today. But you already saw the basics, so to, and that works also with the 3D module. Uh, so that means you can do uh, 2.5D games, you know, uh, and have the sprites inside of a 3D environment or fighting against 3D models if you want. That's a bit weird, but whatever. It's supported. And so, well, you learned how to import sprites into Castang. So good luck with your project and see you all on the Discord. Bye!